What's going on guys? My name is Tommy. Welcome back to the channel. I should probably bust out the rest of the Ancestry Anthology, which I almost called Forgotten Race Review because that's how long it's been since I've recorded one of these. Uh, before they put out new ones next month, shouldn't I? So uh, yeah, Kobold time. Here we go. If you're liking what you're seeing, remember to like, subscribe, and ding the knuckles that won't crack and also bell. Stay caught up on all your Pathfinder first and second edition stuff. We're going to try a new video format this week. If y'all like this better than what you've seen in the past here, let me know. If you hate it, also let me know. We can only level up with feedback from viewers like you now. Let's dive in. Okay, so we've talked about the kobold a whole lot on this channel, and you can follow this card right up here if you would like to catch up on, like, the history of the race at large in D&D. In Pathfinder 2nd Edition, there's a lot of stuff we can say about them. First, the art. They look uh, much different than they used to, and, like, kobolds have come a long way from, like, this here to this here. I think the sweet spot was first edition Pathfinder or like the 5e art for kobolds. What it will also say is variance in things like art means things like subspecies can exist just because we're borrowing from like the hellbender to make our kobolds now doesn't mean we can't have the little dragon doggos that we used to. I digress though. In case you've missed the bus or are entirely new, kobold is a slender little reptilian humanoid about like three feet tall or so they've been described basically everywhere you've seen them ever put out in D D or like fantasy things and big shout out to tucker if he's out there watching this for uh having a group of monsters with very good tactics therefore giving these guys a meme as well as a sense of cunning a penchant for traps and as well as a little bit of draconic ancestry. In older editions of D&D and Pathfinder, with the exception of some like kobold splat things that existed for Pathfinder first, honestly, these guys didn't feel very draconic or good. They always struck me when someone would bring them to the table very, you know, take candle rather than you take me seriously, which is unfortunate, right? In second edition, that has taken a big turn for the better. Let's look at their mechanics, shall we? Alrighty, so mechanically, the Kobold of 2nd Edition has six racial hit points. It is a small creature with a base speed of 25 feet. It has ability boosts to Dexterity and Charisma with one freebie. Say it with me, kids. Long live Dex Cha and an ability flaw in Constitution. It begins play speaking common, draconic, and additional languages equal to a positive int. They've all got dark vision as well as an ability called Draconic Exemplar. At character creation, choose a type of chromatic or metallic dragon or like dragons from earlier editions of Pathfinder slash Starfinder slash later dragons that will inevitably be printed looking at you, primal dragons. This determines your scale, color, and appearance. And it also plays with some of our ancestry feats, which we will talk about momentarily. For our heritages, the Cavern Kobold, when climbing rock walls, stalactites, and other natural stone features, moves at half speed on success and full speed on a crit success. This doesn't affect you if you're using a climb speed. If you roll a success on acrobatics to squeeze, you get a critical success. The dragon scale kobold gets resistance equal to half its level, a minimum of one, to the damage type associated with its draconic exemplar, doubled against a dragon's breath weapon, which is huge, especially for you inventors out there. If you like to run around wielding a stick that explodes, having come from a brass, red, or gold dragon might uh, help you from cooking yourself, which is so important. Spell scale kobolds get one cantrip from the arcane spell list at will with a key spellcasting ability and charisma, as well as the trained proficiency rank in arcane spells, spell attack rolls, and spell DCs. Strong jaw kobolds get a jaws unarmed attack that deals a whopping 1d6 piercing damage for a small creature. That's huge. Normally we're expecting the like 1d3 minus 1 plus this is kind of annoying. That actually hurts someone. It's in the brawling group with the finesse and unarmed traits, of course. Lastly, the Venom Tail Kobold gets a one-action ability called Tail Toxin, which comes from a vestigial spur in the Kobold's tail once per day. If you're wielding a piercing or slashing melee weapon, you apply your tail's venom to that weapon. If your next strike before the end of your next turn hits and deals damage, 
it does persist in poison damage equal to your level. Now, that kind of has me worried for the first edition Wyvarin ever making it over, but it is an extra thing in the Kobold's pocket, so ultimately I don't hate it. For our ancestry feats, out the gate, coming all the way from Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition, cringe. As a reaction, if a creature you are aware of critically succeeds on a strike and would deal damage to you, with pitiful posturing, you cause your foe to pull back a deadly attack. The attacking creature takes a circumstance penalty to the damage of the triggering strike equal to your level plus two. This penalty applies after doubling the crit, and then they're immune to cringe for 24 hours. I sorta hate this because it seems to paint all kobolds as these like pitiful little cringy things, which I guess they were in older editions, so more power to them. But I'd really like to see races step away from that. That said... That's not horrible. Sometimes the difference between life and death is those big puppy dog eyes on your dragon reptile guy. Dragon's presence says when you roll a success on a saving throw against a fear effect, you get a crit success instead. And when you roll a failure against a fear effect, you get a critical failure instead. Because in fact, as a member of dragon kind, you project unflappable confidence that collapses catastrophically against the deadliest foes. Also, when you attempt to demoralize a foe of your level or lower, you get a plus one circumstance bonus to the intimidation check. So it's like a good, bad, good sandwich. More importantly, right out the gate at level one for two actions, Kobold Breath. This comes out in either a 30-foot line or 15-foot cone, as seen here, dealing the appropriate type of energy damage, a d4 of it, in fact. Each creature gets a basic save against the higher of your class DC or spell DC, you can't use this ability again for 1d4 rounds. At 3 in every 2, the damage ticks up by a d4. Breath weapon in-house, super cool. Especially in a system where less things are immune to the stuff we're doing. It might only be 1d4, but throwing a d4 at everybody and then striking the weakest in the cone afterwards, or as this scales up and you start fighting like Arboreals, which are vulnerable to fire. Some say only you can prevent forest fires. I say nay, child. Only you can start them. Kobold lore, of course, like all the ancestries get. Train proficiency in two things that are on flavor, in our case, stealth and thievery, as well as kobold lore. Scamper for one action. If you're adjacent to at least one enemy, you stride up to your speed with a plus five foot status bonus to your speed, and you get a plus two circumstance bonus to your AC against reactions triggered by movement. You must end this movement in a space that's not adjacent to an enemy. So it's not amazing, but it does help you like go a little faster and everything is helpful when you need it, I suppose. Last of the level one, Snare Setter. Gotta be trained in crafting as a prerequisite, which is weird because this also gets you the trained proficiency in crafting. So I feel like that prerequisite is a wash. But if you were already trained in crafting, you instead become trained in a skill of your choice. You gain access to all uncommon kobold snares. You get snare crafting for free. Though when choosing your formulas for that feat, you can also choose from uncommon kobold snares as well as common snares. Because it was one thing to say, hey, we're really good at traps and have a bonus on craft trap stuff. But since traps are more playable in this edition, having that option in-house just feels really good. Next up at level 5, Allies Shelter. It's a reaction. If you attempt to save while adjacent to one or more allies but haven't rolled, use your Allies mod in place of your own. Because, in fact, in stressful circumstances, we find strength in our allies' example. And if we, the kobold fighter, must reflex save out of the way of something, and we really wanted to just hit them with a great axe, and the rogue's doing better, we'll just kobold see, kobold do. For one action, grovel if you are trained in deception. You attempt to feint against a creature. Unlike a normal feint, this creature can be within 30 feet instead of melee reach, and you make your check against will DC instead of perception DC. So... Off the top of my head, I feel like things like animals, which will have a pretty good perception but a lower will, this gives you something else to target. And you can always take Grovel, and if you think you would rather target Will DC, just faint normally. Options are cool. Snare Genius says that each day during daily prep, you can prepare three snares from your formula book for quick deployment. If the snare normally takes a minute, you can craft it with three interact actions. And snares prepped in this way don't cost you any resources to craft. The number of snares you prep this way increases to 4 if you're a master, and to 5 if you're legendary. 
Also, when you craft and deploy a snare that deals damage, any creature that critically fails its saving throw against the snare's initial effect and takes damage becomes flat-footed, which is perfect for an ambush for a kobold rogue or a kobold with a lot of friends who are rogues. Also, it always feels super bad when you want to play a trapper and you prep the battlefield and the bad guys just go the other way. And all this time you spent carefully doodling on the whiteboard where your, like, spike pits would go. Just invalidated to bejesus and back with this it's big team rocket energy except like you might actually catch pikachu and kill and skin ash brock and misty and take all their stuff and start a dragon horde and not blast off again that's right between the scales at level nine when you strike a flat-footed creature using a melee weapon or an armed attack that has the agile and finesse trait it gains the backstabber trait aka a kobold rogue who is not using a dog slicer sawtooth saber or other weapons that haven't come out yet slash i'm forgetting gets the benefit of that extra damage dracomancer at level nine says choose one first level spell and one second level spell from those listed for a dragon spellcaster of your draconic exemplars type such as alarm blur invisibility true strike for a black dragon for example best dragon i'm biased obviously but hey you can cast each of these spells once per day as an arcane innate spell. You gain the trained provisions, you rank in arcane spell attack rolls, DC, and your key spell casting is charisma. That is as varied as the number of dragons and spells that come out. Again, where we sit right now in second edition, this only gets better with time because please believe every best cherry that gets printed is going to have like six, seven dragons in it. This is doubly good if you're allowed to choose things like drakes, lenorms, other dragon-like creatures that I don't necessarily know what are. And it definitely goes a long way to making the kobold feel like it's actually the scion of dragon kind and not just like a weird reptile that worship something bigger than it is on that note dragon's breath bumps kobold's breath damage dice up to d8s and increases the area to a 60 foot line or 30 foot cone if you do this you can't use kobold breath again for an hour that said that's a huge damage die increase from d4s and it's a bigger damage dice than dragon disciples or draconic bloodline sorcerers you know because grandma was a red dragon and you've inherited that power which manifests in a very very dope way lastly elite dracomancer which gets you a third and fourth level spell from those listed for a dragon spellcaster of your dragon exemplars type like paralyze and stinking cloud for a black dragon you get them once a day as arcane innates aka you get even more power even more dragon flavor and even more versatility I have been at a table with a kobold dragon disciple for a little while in the slithering. My first gut instinct thinking about the kobold of second edition is that like, this is playable. I'm not upset with this person for showing up with this meme character though. I mean, meme character. And I think that's a huge step forward for this race. Now they are much more playable than they used to be. And like, I legit want to build and brew around this thing. Not only just because it's the crafty trappy kind of guy, but because it finally has the abilities we've said it had without having to print like a splat book or dig really deep or like dig out feats that in older editions you would take instead of your like power tag furious focus blase the glory of having multiple feet buckets i guess if i were to play one of these well i guess we made a kobold witch a while ago and you can follow this card right up here if you want to get caught up on that i think that's got to be the go-to is some kind of big kobold marshal who really wants to be up front but has a decent enough charisma that the breath weapon still stands out well so my thoughts are like champion of opsu or de hawk have those extra d4s to shotgun forward and then start picking off single targets with our big strikes later and having both options pretty strong because the feet buckets are diversified and no longer just here's one thing I've GM'd for a kobold in the past and it was a friend who played it and like her kobold was a very powerful kobold but I do have to say thinking about GMing for this ancestry in second edition has a lot more appeal to me and I've said this a billion times I guess I'm going to say it one more time because it's just so much cooler than it used to be no longer is this a meme now this is very powerful very playable and I'm sure like every dragon splat book we put out is going to have more class feats for this ancestry but I think I've said enough what do y'all think have we rolled up a kobold in second edition have we played it have we gemmed for him let me hear your thoughts down there so I've got 
two more before I'm all cut up, I think. I want to say it's Duskwalker and Tiefling. Uh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Next week, we'll do one of those. If you have a particular preference, throw it down there. Let me know. Till then, we'll see you next time.